Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, as you'll notice, I'm in a different set with a lot more room echo because I'm currently on holiday and all of this news about NVIDIA stuff came out. So I decided that I have to film a hot news while I'm on my workcation. So excuse if the audio is a bit different than normal and the set's a little different. Actually, I just realized filming in a kitchen. Gosh, dang it, we're more of a Linus clone every single day. Anyways, let's talk about today's video sponsor, UFD Deals. My friends, we own a website where we conglomerate all of the best tech deals that we can find on the website, put them in one location for you to check out so that you can buy them. And with the new life that NVIDIA is breathing into the 10 series, you can go ahead and buy 10 series cards if they're still on sale. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but check out UFD Deals to find out. Anyways, links for that is in the video description. Check it out if you guys are so interested. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into uh, basically what's gonna be mostly an NVIDIA edition of hot news. So yesterday, NVIDIA had their keynote for GTC, which is their annual presentation of all the stuff that they've been working on, usually in terms of AI data center stuff, not much of a gaming environment. It was this time last year that real-time ray tracing was unveiled to us. We got the infamous Star Wars demo that's been playing on loop ever since they unveiled it. And we saw that with four Volta cards, Volta, that's what they're called, four Volta cards, they were running that real-time ray tracing demo, which can now be run on a single Turing card with the ray tracing and tensor cores added in. And if you will recall, I was also on the road this time last year, but I was in a different situation. I was traveling in the States as opposed to actually being on holiday. Anyways, the point is that uh, people were expecting some big announcements from NVIDIA. The chief rumor that was going around the internet was that we would be getting a seven nanometer upgrade to Volta called Ampere. If you would recall from rumors that we talked about over a year ago at this point, January of last year, uh, Ampere was supposed to be the successor for Volta and that's what we were expecting. It turns out that Turing is what we got and there was I, there was a couple different sources that all of a sudden talked about how there would be a seven nanometer replacement for Volta and then that would be the high-end compute lineup and it would be called Ampere based on seven nanometers, NVIDIA's first seven nanometer introduction. And people were expecting that during the keynote yesterday. That didn't happen whatsoever. There are some rumors out there saying that it could happen today during the investors call that NVIDIA has later on but I'm not holding my breath on this one, especially since this is the first I was ever hearing about it. it was right prior, the day prior to GTC. I considered making a video on it, but I, honestly, after looking into it, there wasn't enough rumors to substantiate anything. Seven nanometers coming out from NVIDIA. It's possible that it does happen, but we'll keep you posted if that inevitability occurs. But let's go ahead and talk about the big news to come out from NVIDIA, which is that if you own a 10 series card, or 16 series, I mean, I just picked up a, a GTX 1660. This, my friends, this little 1660 right here, which I picked up from Wootware, thanks Wootware, can now run ray tracing. That's right, NVIDIA announcing that in partnership with Microsoft's DXR, there is going to be a driver update that's coming out in April, which will enable ray tracing in DXR on the 1066 gig and above. So if you have a 1063 gig, 1050 Ti and 1050, you're left out of the equation. Anybody on nine series, screw you too, apparently is what NVIDIA is saying, not direct quote, obviously. But if you have a 1070, 1070 Ti, 10, you get a 10 series, also Volta cards as well, Titan V being in that. DXR will now officially work on that, which kind of confuses me. It's, it's a weird little environment that we're in. Why is NVIDIA doing this? Why is NVIDIA giving us ray tracing on GTX series cards when the whole point of trying to sell RTX cards was the fact that they had ray tracing enabled? Obviously, NVIDIA did some uh, demonstration, or at least they so showed slides of actually how much of a performance uplift we should see in games like Metro Exodus with an RTX 2080 versus a 1080 Ti, and you shouldn't be able to hit 1440p 60 FPS with the 1080 Ti, even though it has the same CUDA horsepower as the RTX 2080. So there still is incentive for you to get good ray tracing on the RTX cards, but you can still get ray tracing on the non-RTX cards. So Yay, but obviously RTX cards still having the advantage of DLSS, which only runs on tensor cores. There are no tensor cores on GTX class cards. So if you want faster frame rates with 
the ray tracing, you have to make sure you have RTX because you, this is just a weird upsell that NVIDIA is trying to do. I know that Steve from Gamers Nexus mentioned that they thought it was to show just how bad ray tracing was on GTX. So it's an easier upsell on onto the RTX cards, but I think it could potentially also have something to do with the fact that Crytek just showed off their Cry Engine real-time ray tracing that was running on a Vega 56. So it's possible that uh, Nvidia is responding to the fact that AMD should have ray tracing alternatives and it would allow developers to come out with more games supporting Nvidia hardware as opposed to the AMD hardware. And maybe, maybe, I don't know. It could be that they're, they're responding to AMD being able to do it just as well. Or it could just be that I'm totally confused and I have no idea what's going on with Nvidia anymore. What, I mean, what the freak is a 1660? That's, the naming scheme's still really stupid. So uh, I'm a little lost here, but I think that VentureBeat has the best headline regarding this and it is, Ray tracing on GTX cards is the medium popcorn of computer graphics. Why would you, why would you ray trace on a 1080 Ti when you could just get a 2080 and have much better ray tracing? I don't know. We'll see where ray tracing goes. Obviously, this does open it up to a lot more game developers. It opens up to a lot more actual end users to have ray tracing on their GTX class graphics cards. A lot more people with 1080 Ti's out there than an RTX 2080. So. We'll see, is this gonna help it go anywhere? It does seem to indicate that there is a future of ray tracing on just generic horsepower, but thankfully to Nvidia's uh, future looking, the dedicated hardware of RTX is gonna make them the best and only option, don't you know? On top of that, we also got an announcement of Unity working with NVIDIA on real-time ray tracing developments. This is coming after the fact that Jensen has already leaked their partnership at an investor's call for their Q1 earnings. So not, not a real big announcement was already kind of leaked. And then it was also announced that NVIDIA is working with the developer of the Quake 2 ray tracing game setup that was going on to actually improve it and bring some more modern uh, uh, developments into the game. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with that, you can check out the video that we did right up there where we ran the Quake 2 demo, which has ray tracing on it in with RTX cards. So check that out. But then we also got a showcase from Nvidia of the new Gaugan technology, which turns basically what looks like Microsoft Paint into photorealistic landscapes, uh, basically using artificial intelligence, machine learning, all that kind of good buzzword stuff. It allows you to paint like an idiot and then come out with really breathtaking landscape stuff. It, it looks really cool. It's interesting. Check it out. And then they also unveiled the $99 Jensen Nano, which will allow you to do uh, DIY AI compute stuff. It apparently only runs on about five watts. It does 472 gigaflops of processing power for neural networks and is on a 128 core Maxwell based GPU, which is a little old school, but uh, is not meant for just generic computing. It's meant for more AI stuff. And then apparently GeForce Now, the beta has a l over 1 million people on the waiting list with Nvidia promising to upgrade the data centers to have Turing based graphics instead of the previous ones that they had. Uh, and just a lot of promise is right now and hopefully it would actually get rolled out in a significant way with data centers in every place that's proper but we'll have to see i'm not big on game streaming i live in africa where we're not going to have a data center for this kind of crap so it, it upsets me and then the last bit of nvidia news from gtc is that they are trying to produce an open source standard for autonomous cars to make sure that people's cars run in line with safety and making sure they don't kill nobody so good guy in video with open source and stuff for uh, autonomous driving. And then the last bit of NVIDIA news overall is that the GTX 1650 has been leaked. The GTX 1650 Gaming X, it's okay. Four gigabytes of GDDR5, TU117 chip, not much else going on. Probably gonna go for 150 to $180, which is okay. I don't know. Is anybody excited about the new cars? I mean, the 1660 seems to be received with little fanfare for $220. It's great and we'll buy, but uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, rustling anybody's jimmies. But now it can ray trace. So, uh, 
Turing-based ray tracing, thank you. And then there's also news that Microsoft has uh, is trying to adopt variable rate shading for the generic industry as a whole. We've done reports about how NVIDIA has already implemented that into certain games like Wolfenstein 2 based off of their Turing architecture. AMD has filed a patent for it. We're expecting it on Navi. And now it looks like Microsoft's gonna be supporting it across all platforms, making sure that everybody has variable rate shading. And in case you're not familiar with that, it's just, uh, it allows pixels on the edge to be rendered at a lower setup than the pixels that people should be paying attention to. Foveated rendering is a term that people tend to use with regards to that. It's great for VR because what you're focusing on is what you need rendered. And then if you don't render the outside stuff as high quality, then that means that there's less processing power, but you have the same visual fidelity. So faster frame rate and that kind of stuff. But you know what's not fast frame rate? MySpace and them losing my gosh dang dope playlist from back in 2006 when I was still on it in high school. And man, I'm so glad because whew, Apparently they lost 12 years of content from 2003 to 2015. They migrated some servers and all of it's gone. That makes me happy. Makes, I'm so glad to know that my dumb high school stuff is just not there anymore. I haven't gone back to it in ages, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with this. Good job, MySpace. Thank you for deleting my internet history. I appreciate it. And then some another bit of news from last year, not just talking about ray tracing stuff, the Atari VCS, which is the new Atari emulator thing that's coming out. Apparently it's getting delayed again, but that's because they're gonna be upgrading the hardware to a Ryzen embedded processor, which is undisclosed at this point, might is probably gonna be running Vega graphics, might be running Navi. I, I wouldn't speculate as to that. It's probably not gonna be. I'm gonna guess that it's probably just Vega, but it's gonna be arriving in late 2019 not soon like it was supposed to. We reported on this last year. I don't, why is this not out yet? That's dumb. You know, it's not dumb, Intel. I mean, actually that depends on who you ask. Anyways, their Project Z graphics cards have announced their first customer. Yes, my friends, they are going to be building a supercomputer, Aurora, which is going to be the one, the first supercomputer capable of sustained exascale computing, and it's gonna be all run on Project Z graphics cards. It's gonna have Optane memory, and it's gonna be on previously or not yet released Xeon chips. So this is gonna be in partnership with Intel and the Department of Energy, making sure that they are bringing us all the best supercomputer stuff that we need for the things that are going on. I don't know what that accent was. I don't know why I talked about it like that, but that's what you get. That's the rest of the Project Z news. And that's the end of hot news today. As I mentioned, I'm currently on a workcation. I expected that I'd have to do a hot news or two while I was here. So I brought everything that was necessary for it. So hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Don't forget to check out UFD deals to save on the dopest tech deals known to man so that you can save money, we make money, affiliate kickbacks, all that good stuff. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and stay after the outro to see a little tour of my space, I suppose. Okay, so this is obviously the kitchen that you're seeing right now. This is this is great, but let's let's take this thing off of the. I have pillows right there to hopefully help with uh, making sure that the sound was good and it wasn't that great. But and then this is my view right out the window. So uh, I'm in Cape Town. In case you didn't know, oh yeah, look at how foggy it is outside. That's lovely. Nothing, nothing going on. Nothing good happening right now. It was beautiful earlier today, but uh, that's the ocean over there. That's the Atlantic Ocean, in case you didn't know. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna try to do this vlog style. I don't know if my arm is long enough, but uh, that's it for hot news today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you too, bye.